Hey guys, it's Jbabs. It's been a while. I used to paint every week. I still do actually. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. That is where I'm more active. But today I'm gonna take you through this little painting here and I'm gonna talk about my steps, my process, and maybe you can get some value out of this. So let's get into it. Um, I'll let this start playing off. Uh, love this time let's replay this is from procreate on the ipad um, although i have been exploring some other things some other paint software but nevertheless we are here at procreate and um, as i'm starting off here you'll see that i start to block in the shapes right so in the other videos i always talk about blocking in shapes um, the main form right getting the blocks color blocks in uh, if this was traditional painting I would be saying use your big brushes and cover as much surface area as you can um, so that's basically what I'm doing now I'm starting off with a bigger brush and getting the larger gestures in, in, the, in the areas of the face so that I can cover as much uh, surface area as possible because what can happen later on in the drawing is um, I'm, I probably said this in the other videos but when you get to a point where maybe you're half an hour in or maybe even 45 minutes in and you've only rendered a specific section of the face lips are really tempting one because everybody <laughs> everyone has lips but it's just one of the most interesting places to paint along with the eyes um, there's a lot happening right there's crevices inside of the lips same thing with the eyes as opposed to just these broad areas within the face so people can get lost in rendering specific areas like that um, so what I try to do is to cover the, the whole generic area so that way I have enough color into the face so that when I'm further along the painting there isn't one undefined area that is going to throw me off later so for example if I'm half an hour in, 45 minutes in, and I don't have the section defined right now. What would happen is I'm gonna need to go in, and as a result of going in, after the other things have been rendered, this section might need to be darker. And because it's darker, it starts to throw off the other values in the face. So that's primarily why I try to block everything in. Uh, people do this differently. Um, I've seen many oil painters. They'll actually just use a, a tiny brush and render in the face parts at a time. But I wouldn't use them as an example because they, people that do that typically have a lot of experiences painting values within the face and they don't necessarily need to plan it out as much uh, as you would in this in this way so this way is definitely I don't want to say easier but it can be easier to follow the values as opposed to trying to render parts at a time so that's uh, that's why I usually start like this and I'll just I'll let this play for a bit more same reason why I'm blocking in the hair. You'll see how that starts to influence some of my other decisions later on here. So you can see I'm starting to block in this darker area right here where the face and the reason again why I'm putting in the hair at this stage is because as I start to darken that I can then start to tell if the face is too pale or my lights are too light or too dark and that dark immediately starts to highlight that as I'm painting so when everything is more or less 
monochromatic like this very similar similar values the light and darks aren't immediately apparent or well, they can look fine right now but as i start to block in the darker shapes i'll start to get a feel of the overall paint let this play for a bit more continuing to block in the shapes and right there you can see that i'm starting to darken the darker side of the face so on her right side here i it's gone a bit quick but you can see from that value which looks fine when nothing's in but as soon as i put in the darker value it starts to look too pale right too too bright so to avoid this happening i block in the part of the face and this part of the hair so that it starts to highlight that this part of the face is maybe too too bright and by doing that because i haven't over committed to the rendering inside of the face everything's blocked in just to so that i can also get a sense of the character or what it's a reference in this case but so i can get some idea of the likeness and a little bit of rendering is required of that though it's not always uh, but for me i wanted to get some parts of that likeness in there and if i let this play again so darkening that part you'll see i darken a bit of the nose as well right there and as i keep going yeah i um I'm adjusting based on the lightest lights and the darkest darks. And now I'm just uh, refining. And in a little bit here, I'll talk about something I use sometimes to blend the shapes or blend the, the shade in within the face. I'll zoom in a bit here just so you can see it and right there so before i start to blend you can see it's um i didn't go to intense on trying to blend everything perfectly but i did enough so that when i come in with a layer of texture that texture actually starts to blend in the the light and the darks um, so that's exactly what just happened there so you can see it it feels a lot more I don't want to say smoother because the texture is clearly not as smooth but because there are lots of little lots of little values in tiny places uh, it almost creates a half tone if you don't know what half tone is half tone is basically a technique where it's you how can i explain this basically there's lots of little dots and the closer the dots are together the the darker that concentrated area is the the less concentrated the further apart they are from each other the more light seems to be getting into that area so that's the kind of uh, half tone effect that this is given when I start to give it a layer of texture. You guys can use this too, try it out. Um, but sometimes I do use this to blend uh, certain parts of the, of the subject. Um, this is one of the shorter the videos one of the shorter videos I've done but hopefully you guys got an idea of um, how I approach something like this it's um, the difference between this and a super finished piece is just more rendering but you can see here most of the parts already blocked in I've got my 
areas of highlight, areas of um, docks. I've got my my docks and yeah, my docks and the lights are in. The main features are in, um, and I will just keep rendering in this case and render parts of the hair. And the more you do it, the more it starts to look realistic. And this is kind of the stage where I may commit to a specific section of the painting just to try and flush that out and make it a bit more um, a bit more rendered essentially so but at this stage it's exact same process from going to that super finish space and starting from here um, with traditional painting sometimes the techniques are different sometimes you don't want to get to this uh, stage before you render something so, like I said with oil, some people will start off with a, a tiny brush and render up small areas at a time. And the reason I do that also is because oil takes a long time to dry. So if you're trying to layer on top of oil, it's going to take you a while. Right? If you're using real oils, you're going to have to wait days sometimes. So to avoid that, people will rend up parts at a time but they also have a lot of experience dealing with value and dealing with color so they're the experts at doing that which is why this might be this solution here where you kind of bring the painting up uh, fully uh, to this stage where you can then dive in with a bit more rendering detail um, so another traditional medium whether it's easier to do that or use that technique is acrylic because acrylic doesn't take that long to dry you can layer um, half an hour uh, 20 minutes after putting down a certain layer and uh, especially if you're in a well ventilated area you can do that with acrylic sometimes watercolor as well because watercolor especially if you're finding it um, it will dry quicker if your paper is thick it will absorb quicker and you can go in and layer with um, layers essentially and build up your shading in that way so kind of how I went from here if this is watercolor or acrylic I could put down that dark and come in with a, a, a heavier layer of another color um, like I did in this in this section of the face there um, the only thing is with watercolor, you want to typically get your highlights in and never touch the highlights because it's really hard to bring back um, the negative area on your paper with watercolors. Why? Because you can't exactly erase um, paint. You can paint over it, but with watercolors because of the translucency it's hard to get that freshness of the paper uh, by painting white over it. The same freshness of white that the paper has, you can't get that with, um, with the white pigment of the wall color. So it's easier with acrylic. You can continue painting over acrylic. And actually, oftentimes with acrylic, you're washing your background anyways with a layer of... Uh, neutral paint so that you can bring out the highlights easier and faster as well so basically that's just how i do it and i'll share a bit more in the next one see you next time